good morning students today we are starting our second unit of class 11 that is kinematics although it consists of number of chapters we will take them one by one first is uniform motion so first of all let me introduce mechanics mechanics it is a branch of physics which deals with the study of motion of the objects whatever be the object what kind of motion can be there that we all, that we will study here in mechanics mechanics is classified into different branches first is statics see statics static means rest position so it is that branch of mechanics which deals with the study of objects at rest position when we are taking rest position of the body it doesn't mean that no force is acting on it there can be the case when number of forces acting on the body are in equilibrium even then the body can be at rest let's see if we are taking suppose the body is placed over the surface that the force applied from this is f force applied from this side is f and if weight is acting downward and the reaction force is acting upward so you can see that weight will always be balanced with the reaction and the force applied from both the sides it will not make the body to change its position so here the body will remain at rest even though the forces are acting but the forces are in equilibrium equilibrium means the net force acting on the system is zero so when object can be at rest even when number of forces acting on it are in equilibrium therefore statics is a branch of mechanics which deals with study of motion of the object under the effect of forces in equilibrium that is simple term we can say the object when it is taken to be at rest we study it in statics kinematics kinetic kinetic refer to motion matics related with the maths it means whatever motion of an object we are studying that the related mathematical concept we will study here in kinematics what can be the different equations how can we generalize the motion in mathematical form what can be velocity that all we study here in kinematics so it is a branch of mechanics which deals with the study of motion of the objects most important point it without considering the factors responsible for its motion which causes the motion like if we are taking let the body is falling downward that in this kinematic we have to study the body is falling straight downward under the influence of gravity why it is having changing velocity why acceleration due to gravity is constant what force is responsible that we will not study here that will be under the next part dynamics so kinematics that branch is a branch here only we have to focus only on the study of motion of the object without bothering the force the cause responsible for its motion dynamics coming to dynamics 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 dynamic means power basically dynamics is derived from a greek word that means power it is a branch of mechanics which deals with study of motion of objects by considering the factors which causes motion here you can differentiate from kinematics in kinematics you have to study only the motion but in dynamics you have to study the force responsible for its motion why there is a change that's it so it means that factor responsible for change of motion or causing motion that we will study here in dynamics so students here i have introduced the basic concept the basic categories of mechanics that statics kinematics and dynamics now here we have to study kinematics that means branch of physics which deals with motion of objects without focusing on the factors responsible for its motion so now let me introduce one term that is rest what do you mean by rest if you recall from class 9 syllabus you have introduced the term that a object is said to be at rest if it does not change its position with respect to surroundings surroundings means you are sitting in your room in your home you can see where you are sitting then in the surrounding walls are at rest your tv set is at its own position sofa set is at its own position 
that means your position is not changing with respect to side by chair tv set walls or anything lying in your room so it means when your position is not changing with respect to the surrounding then you are said to be at rest example i have taken a book lying on a table a person sitting in a chair and many more example can be there main important point that you have to check your position with respect to your surroundings surroundings with respect to your surroundings your position is not changing it means you are at rest next is motion object is said to be in motion if it's change if it changes its position with respect to its surroundings obviously when you are saying then your position is changing every measurement is done with time so time is continuously passing but here we are starting that the position is changing with respect to surroundings suppose you are going on the road and you observe that when you are moving on a cycle then surrounding objects are changing their position actually you are moving and surrounding that are fixed but they are appear to move in the backward direction so with respect to your surroundings that are fixed you are changing your position so you are said to be in motion now next let me relate rest and motion rest and motion are relative terms how can we understand it in the same object can be at rest as well as in motion how can you say this the same object can be at rest or in motion it means your observation point should change let me take one example suppose you are sitting inside a moving train or a bus now passengers are sitting in your surrounding in that bus so when you look at uh, other passenger sitting at their positions then you are at rest with respect to other co passengers but as the bus is continuously moving so surrounding that means surrounding uh, you can say trees surrounding building houses shops that are changing their positions that means when you are moving actually bus is moving so your position is changing with respect to surrounding with respect to surrounding their surrounding can be road building any tall surface anything which is in the surrounding which you can easily observe so here you can see that whenever you have observed it in your childhood that when you are moving in a bus or a car trees or the buildings appear to move in the backward direction actually they are not moving in the backward direction but you are moving forward and they are at their respective positions so due to change in position they appear to move in the backward direction so it means you as a passenger the single object you are at rest with respect to your co passenger sitting inside the same bus but you are in motion with respect to outside environment that means the same object can be at rest as well as in motion so with the help of example i have just given this concept a person sitting in a moving bus is at rest with respect to his co passengers but is in motion with respect to the objects outside the train or a bus you can take anything either bus or a train similarly now we just elaborated in a broad view how if a person standing at any point on earth is at rest with respect to earth you are standing sitting anywhere on the earth with because your observation point is with respect to earth and for we all earth appear to be at rest so we all are at rest but if we observe earth with respect to universe where other planets are there and earth is moving with respect to the solar system then you can say that we along with the earth are in motion with respect to other planets so this concept should be clear as earth is so huge we can take earth to be at a reference fixed but when you have to study motion of earth with respect to surrounding it means other planets then earth is in motion so this is a example how you can understand that rest and motion are relative terms these are not absolute it means for measurement of any kind of motion or position of rest we require some surrounding we require some reference 
point. Now, after this, let me introduce different types of motion. First is rectilinear motion. Rectilinear motion. Rectilinear means, let's, let me take it in a simple way. Suppose a person is moving along a straight line. Then that motion is taken as a rectilinear motion. So motion in which a particle or point mass body is moving along a straight line. I will introduce what is point mass body. You can take it as any body is moving along a straight line. Now, if we take that, suppose this is a body. This is moving along a straight line. Now, each particle of this body, the body consisting of number of particles. So, each particle of this body that will also move along the same parallel lines. All the particles are moving along the same parallel lines because the body is moving with certain velocity. And each particle of this body will move along the same path along which the body is moving. As this body is, suppose a car is moving along a straight line. And until and unless it is moving along a straight line, each particle of the car will move along the same path. So for that case, we will take it as translatory motion. Although the concept is quite similar. It is that motion in which a body, which is not a point mass body, in which point mass body, actually we can say a body consisting of number of particles. It is not point mass body. We are taking any body. Any body which is moving such that all its constituent particles move simultaneously along parallel straight lines. And all its constituent particles shift through equal distance in equal interval of time. It means if a car is moving along a straight line, straight road, then all the particles including its wheel, its steering wheel, its seats, all are moving along a straight direction. So that motion is translatory motion and this is also a rectilinear motion. Now, next is circular or rotatory motion. Circular motion. Suppose you can imagine that you have a park and that is having circular periphery. So when a person is moving on that circular periphery, then the motion of the object is said to be as circular motion. So circular motion is that motion in which particle is or a body is moving on a circle about a fixed point which is taken as the center of the circle. You can see here if this is the periphery, this is the path on which a person and a body can move and this is a fixed point with respect to which it is moving. So when the person or a body is moving along this circular track, when we are taking it to be a point mass body, and, uh, you can say the body having very small size. Although I will explain point mass body later on, but for now you can imagine that is a very a body that is of negligible small size. So a body that is moving along this circular path with about a common center, so motion is said to be circular motion. But rotatory motion. Rotatory motion is a motion in which the body is not point mass body. It means body consisting of number of particles. So if this, suppose the car is moving along the circular path and all the, all individual particles of this car, of, of this body having certain size are moving along the same concentric circular paths. I have taken only two particles. You can say that there can be infinite number of particles of this body that are moving along the circular track. So all the particles of the body will move along the circular path. So basically rotatory motion is a motion in which a body which is not a point mass body is moving such that all its constituent particles move simultaneously along concentric circles. Means about a fixed center point. So this was your circular motion. Next is your oscillatory motion. You are familiar with oscillatory motion. Oscillation means to and fro motion about its mean position. You have seen sometimes in your wall clocks there is a pendulum is given. It is moving to and fro about its mean position. So motion in which body moves to and fro or back and forth rapidly about a fixed point in a definite interval of time that is taken to be oscillatory motion. You can understand it with an example. Suppose if you have a spring and if you just 
stretch the spring and leave it then it will before coming to rest it will keep on compressing and elongating that means that is a kind of you can say oscillatory motion in class 9 there was one example one experiment was there of simple pendulum where you can take it as a bob or a stone you can take tie it with a thread and just take it to the extreme position and start giving it vibration and leave it then it will continue to vibrate for a longer time before coming to rest so about this mean position it means if this is a pendulum and going to extreme position this and coming to this going from o to a then from a to o then from o to b point and then from this so this vibration o to a a to o O to B, B to O. So this kind of vibration of any object, this is under oscillatory motion. So although oscillatory and vibratory motion are almost one and the same thing, but slight point that I have to tell you that in oscillatory motion, the amplitude is very small. So motion is said to be vibratory motion. Yes, now in the previous definition, there was a concept of point mass object. When an object is said to be point mass, you are familiar that when we are taking the term point, you will treat this as a point. So, when we are talking in terms of point mass object, actually any object which has just a mass equal to that of a point or negligible mass, very very small mass, even a smallest particle cannot be there that which is not having mass. So we are imagining it, we are comparing it, any object with certain point. What is that point? When an object is said to be point mass object, point object or point mass object. See, if we take, suppose a car has to move from Jammu to Kanyakumar, right? If it is covering a distance of 500 kilometer, or more than that, I am taking simply an example. If it is moving from destina uh, different destination points far apart from each other. 500 is a small or you can take it as much more. But you can see either 500 kilometer, 1000 kilometer or more than that. But car dimensions, it can be of 2 to 3 meters only. Or rather, if you are taking about a bus, again it can be of 4 meter, 5 meter, not more than that. So, when the size, the dimension of the object which is moving is very small as compared to the distance covered by it between two points, then this object, this car will be treated as a point object. See once again, when the object which is mo moving from one point to another, then its size is very small as compared to the distance covered by it from initial to final point. Then only we will treat this point object as this object as a point object or point mass object. So now coming to the definition, an object can be considered as a point mass if during motion in a given time it covers distances much greater than its own size. That I have explained by taking the example of car. Any cyclist you can take, any uh, bus you can take, many more different examples can be. So, a car traveling few hundred kilometers distance can be taken as a point object. Now, when you will start doing questions on its basis in NCRT also, there is a question where different cases have been given and asked that uh, identify which of the following case will be treated as a point mass. So if you have NCRT book, then you can just practice that question. If you don't have NCRT and, or if you have any reference book, then also solved NCRT questions are given there. So open that page, just see the statement, try to find out the answer and tell it with the result whether you are able to give the correct answer on the basis of concepts you have study. So this I have told you about point mass object. Now next is motion in 1, 2 and 3 dimension. So basically 1, 2 and 3 dimension to understand the concept of motion in 1, 2 and 3 dimension let me take one example. We are familiar with the coordinates. This is the origin. This is x coordinate. This is y coordinate. 
you will treat it as if a body is moving along x axis covering a distance of suppose 4 cm then only the motion of the body is along x axis or if i will take the body is moving along y axis covering a distance of 7 cm then you will say here only one coordinate is changing that is along y axis that means if you will say let the body has reached to point B, so its coordinate with respect to origin will be x coordinate is 0 and y coordinate is 7. Only one coordinate is changing. Here if the body after covering a distance of 4 cm reaching to point A, only this point then this coordinate, this point has coordinate 4 and 0. Then x coordinate is 4 cm and y coordinate 0. It means for representing the position of any body, we require coordinates in geometry. So if either x coordinate or y coordinate or z coordinate, any of the one coordinate is changing with respect to its surroundings, then we are taking it to be motion in one dimension. Or in simple terms, you can say this is treated as motion in a straight line. One dimensional motion is treated as motion in a straight line that can be along x axis, y axis or suppose I have to represent z axis. This is not possible to draw. If I will draw just I will take this as a perpendicular. Suppose you can see this is x axis, this is y axis and this is z axis. If the body is suppose a fly is there sitting at this point or, if I, or a Aunt is there and this is moving along this path. So in that particular case, it is moving along this coordinate. So this is Z coordinate. So I am explaining it all the concepts one by one. So first of all, as I have to introduce the concept of motion in one dimension, it means if body is moving along a straight line that can be X, Y or Z axis. Any line, any straight line if the body is moving, that is taken as the motion along one dimension. So see here, motion of an object is said to be one dimensional if only one out of the three coordinates, three coordinates means x, y, z, specifying the position of an object changes with time. If only one coordinate is changing with time, then only you are taking it as motion in one dimension. That means motion along a straight line. So, in one dimension motion, object moves along a straight line or well-defined straight path. It is also termed as rectilinear or linear motion. That is motion along a straight line. So, example, I have given example. Other examples are also an object dropped from a certain height above the ground. If the body is falling downward straight along a straight path, then it is an example. It is a motion is considered as one dimensional or motion of a train or a bus or train we are taking along a straight track or a bus along a straight path. So these are few examples. There can be many more examples from the practical life. See here in the previous unit you were finding the concepts simply formula based. There was no there was not actual concept of physics used in that particular unit but here from this unit onward you will study the basic concepts, you can visualize them, you can relate them with the day-to-day -day practical life examples. So physics, now you get an interest in the physics by correlating the written concepts with the day-to-day -day activities. So this was about one-dimensional motion. Now coming to two-dimensional motion. See, two-dimensional motion, that whatever is written on this page, here, this is x-coordinate, this is y-coordinate. This is y coordinate, this can be z coordinate. So anything which I can write over the sheet anywhere, this is in two dimension. First of all, before two dimensional motion, let me understand two dimension. The square, this is two dimensional, circle, two dimensional. It means these are two dimensional objects which we can draw on this sheet. On the blackboard, only two coordinates are present. Suppose on this sheet, if I want to draw a cylinder, a sphere, a cube. Suppose I want to draw this cube or if I want to draw a sphere. This is simply a imagination. But you cannot observe 
its exact picture you can see this is this is the cuboid having this is length this is breadth and this is the height portion so when you will place it like this you can see here this height portion cannot be drawn on the sheet although i have drawn this figure but this is not giving the third view this is simply giving you the idea but you cannot realize that height part in this case similarly a cylinder a sphere any three dimensional object you cannot draw it with a clear third coordinate visible to you so it means when i am writing now coming to the motion when i am drawing this line this is a straight line i am drawing this line this is also a straight line but if i will take uh, suppose you are taking the case that the body is moving suppose you can take that the ant any ant is moving over this floor this is a floor or a ball just you are hitting it and it is moving randomly over anywhere on this plane so this type of motion random motion without knowing the position just it can be it is free to move anywhere on its sheet on the floor then it is an example of two dimensional motion it means only two of the coordinate changes out of the three coordinate then the motion is said to be two dimensional so basically the motion of an object is said to be two dimensional if two out of the three coordinates specifying the position of the object changes with time it is also called motion in a plane actually if we take suppose um coordinate system if you are taking this is the origin so if i am writing if i am drawing anything on this this is x y plane if i am writing anywhere on this this is y z plane if i am writing anything on this this is z x plane so this sheet is treated as a plane and now you can imagine that you can see at your home that your wall if you are seeing at the wall just directly and you find any insect is moving over it any reptile lizard is moving over it then it is an example of two dimensional motion if you are finding ball is simply moving not jumping just moving over the floor this is an example of two dimensional motion now so you can take this motion to be motion in a plane now coming to the case here this is also called motion in a plane so i have given the example a carom coin yes i have uh, just missed this example carom board you play and the carom coin simply slips over the board so that can be an example of two dimensional motion so now you can uh, imagine more example just work on it that what can be other examples you can relate from your daily life now coming to three dimensional motion three dimensional motion first of all before coming to the basic definition i will say you have seen bird flying in the sky kite flying in the sky without limiting that it will not move along certain height reason it can go in any the of the direction maybe along horizontal along vertical and along the inclined direction so when all the three coordinates are changing with respect to the surroundings that means motion of an object is said to be three dimensional if all the coordinates specifying the position of the object changes with time this is called three dimensional motion actually this is also called motion in space one dimensional motion straight line motion two dimensional motion motion in a plane three dimensional motion motion in a space so you can take random motion of gas molecules on heating in a jar or in a container when you are cooking something then the gas molecules suppose water is boiling the gas mole uh, the molecules are moving randomly on heating so that random motion of the molecules that can be an example of three dimensional motion so basically when the molecules are moving along any path then you can take any path along which a system a body is moving that is taken as the trajectory so path followed by any object during its motion is called trajectory so beta here we what we are doing actually we are just understanding the concept of 
वन टू एंड थ्री डायमेंशनल मोशन ऑल दो वी हैव टू जस्ट रियलाइज इट हाउ कैन यू कंपेयर दिस इज एन एग्जाम्पल ऑफ वन डायमेंशनल मोशन टू डायमेंशनल मोशन एंड थ्री डायमेंशनल मोशन get the concept of three dimension more clear if you are sitting in your room look at the corner look at the corner of your room from that corner you are finding three lines one is downward one another is you can take it as along the length another is taken at the breadth you can take ceiling look at the ceiling of your room when you are looking at the ceiling in the extreme corner you are finding three lines now you can treat the horizontal line that can be treated as x axis the vertical line that will be taken taken as y axis and the third that is perpendicular to these three that is taken as the z axis so your room act as a space in which if any insect is flying here some mosquito is flying there this can be the example of three dimensional motion so try to visualize imagine many more new examples correlate with the basic concepts then only physics seems to be very interesting to you people so this is all critical concept i have introduced today so just revise the concepts learn the definitions now soon we will meet in the next class thank you have a nice day